Our theme for the month of, of July has been manifesting as sons. God manifesting us as his sons. Did you know that God is very strategic? From the very beginning, even before you and me were, during, uh, um, when he was creating Adam and Eve, in Genesis 1.28, Genesis 1.28, the Bible says, Then God blessed them, that is Adam and Eve, okay? And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Hold that verse there. This is at the creation time. God was very strategic. He was seeing the end. He was talking about the end at the beginning. And he was giving the mandate to our parents, Adam and Eve. And their mandate was to be fruitful, in other words, to multiply and bring in more sons and daughters. That's why we say we are their sons. That is our origin. Because numbers help us in dominating. We have all heard, especially in the nation of Kenya, whenever there, is, there are erections, until some counties have brought in their telling, don't celebrate. How many of us know which one, which, which comes and turns the, everything upside down? Am I talking to Kenyans? So who, which county? So God would want us to be the Rakarnithi of sons and daughters dominating that wherever you go, he can see I am represented there. And that is why he, would, he, would, he has that strategy, he has that desire that you and me should be manifested as sons. Because he knows when you represent him wherever you are, he will receive the glory. He wants you to be manifested, that your witnesses around you will lift up and say, there is a God in heaven. And from today, this shall be our God. We are going to worship this God. You need to be manifested. I'm not saying you are not, but you can, you can be brighter. The Bible says that with you get brighter and brighter by the day. So I, my mission this morning for the next few minutes is to stir you up. That you can ask God to manifest you as his son, as his ambassador, as his representative, wherever you find yourself. Not only on a Sunday morning, but even from Monday to Saturday. That you will represent the kingdom. Actually, in Isaiah 43, 21, the Bible says, These people, and by the way, you are the people. These people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. God would want you and me to declare his praise and cause those around us to declare his praises. That is why the need. By the time we are done with reading God's word, I would, I would feel so fulfilled if you go desiring to be manifested as a son wherever you find yourself. Romans 8, 19, that has been our, our theme verse. For the honest, ah. okay, I'll read what I have here. Then you at the media, you'll find out where it is. For the honest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Thank you, Lily. Expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. When I read this verse, I wanted to get a few definitions about of manifestation. And among the many, I picked on this one. To make evident or certain by showing or displaying. To make evident or certain by showing or displaying. God has an agenda for you and me. He wants to display you, to be proud of you. As his son. I'm reminded of the book of Job. The Bible says that the sons of men were going to show themselves before God. And also Satan showed up. And God said this, have you seen my son? To Job, it was a, a series of trouble 
testing trials. But do you know it was a setup? God was displaying. God was so sure. God was so proud that Job will not let him down. Can God be proud of you? That under whatever circumstance, he can display his glory you through you. Other versions of that verse are talking about revealing the sons of God. And I wanted to see a definition of the word reveal. Make previously unknown or a secret information known to others. Previously unknown. Known. This morning, God wants you in that sphere where you find yourself from Monday to Saturday, you are not known. He wants you to be known as his son. Maybe they know you as the manager. They know you as the supervisor. They know you as the owner of that business. But God has a desire that that shop can be referred to. That shop of my son. That shop. By the way, when I talk of sons in the kingdom, DOIs, you are also sons. That is where we inherit. I love the word of God. It is gender sensitive. So I loved it when Pastor Millicent was saying, when we are talking about the wedding women, we are also talking about the wedding sons. After all, the men in the house, you are the bride of Christ. You are well represented. That's why you cannot afford to keep quiet. Because God has an expectation. Other similar words from the word review were disclose, let out, sleep out, etc. And the meaning alludes to the fact that something is hidden or unknown until God in some form or through some process makes it possible and knowable to a person. Therefore, this morning, all creation is desperately crying for us to be revealed as sons in the earth. This expectation is created, was created the day we believed in Jesus Christ, our personal Savior. John 1, 12 to 13. And by the way, because it's a cold morning, I want you to do some exercise so we shall lead together. John 1, 12 to 13. Let's go. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. In another version, it talks about, uh, I think in the uh, KJV, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The day you believed, you became a complete package. Inside you, there is the potential of God displaying you as his son. And he's so proud about you. And everybody, the world, have you heard in the recent and last in our nation? Actually, we take the responsibility. But have you heard that the church has been so quiet? What do you think they are saying like that? They have an expectation. You declare that you know God, and we declare that we know I have a big, big God, a mighty God, and you are so quiet, if anything, you are joining to the chorus of, there is a good chorus to join in, but there is also a bad one to join. A bad one to, to join is the one they are saying, kill. That one is not godly. But justice, that one is a good one, but not at the cost of our life. The, even the world, your office mates, they, they wait for you to say something, you are saying nothing. And they ask, what do you think about what has happened? What do you think about the Gen Z? I would be interested to hear what you, how you have been responding. They, ha, they I have an expectation. Whether you like it or not, did you know keeping quiet is also something? Actually, tell your neighbor, if you are saying nothing, you are on the fence. <laughs> Trying to look which side will win, and then I'll jump there. That shall not be your portion because God has an expectation and the creation has an expectation and we must be relevant. We are sons of God because we are light. When we arrived in the kingdom, we were a full 
package. God's expectation is that wherever he is represented by his sons and daughters, the witnesses should behold the manifested sons and give God glory and praise. He expects us to be the light, chasing away the darkness because we are the light. Did you know immediately you switch on the right, darkness disappears? And the Bible has already said, you are the right of the world. You should step in in a dark room where people are so miserable and they see right and they see hope. Tell your neighbor you are a carrier of hope. You are the right of the world. Some of us, instead of being the light, we have been carrying the right. There is a difference between the two. If I'm carrying this and it is the torch, it simply means if I keep it down, I'm no longer, I no longer have the right. But if I'm the right, wherever I step in, I come in and they see hope and they see right. That shall be your portion. Because Jesus has already, God has already declared that you are his son, you are the right of the world, you are the salt of the world, and he wants you to be manifested as such. Many of us are living on earth, but not showing our true identity as sons. Our full potential has not been disclosed. And you know what? Sons are powerful. That is why we sing, I'm no longer a slave. A slave and a son are not the same. A son has everything the father has. Luke 15, that one. In NIV. This is a story about the two sons, the prodigal son and the other son. And the other son was so annoyed when he came home and found the father had slaughtered and there was a party celebrating a son who had gone and now he was back. And he was complaining to the son, father and saying, I have been here all this time and you have never given me anything to share with my friends. And I want you to watch at the response of the son. Shall we read together? My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. Am I talking to sons in the morning? This morning, am I talking to sons? God, your father is saying that everything that he has belongs to you. And that is why he wants you to be manifested. So that instead of complaining, you will know wherever I am. Wherever I am, I am the difference. Did you know that wherever you are, you and God are the constant? You go to Trokana, like Pastor Dan and Rosemary, you don't understand Trokana. But God and you are there. And imagine you remain relevant. You should see them cooking ugari, not ugari, uji, and feeding those children. It, it warms my heart when I see them feeding those children. And they are so excited, almost asking, are you the Jesus? Because I understand when you pray, Jesus is the one who comes. Yes, if they ask you, tell them, yes, I am his ambassador. He has sent me to this school. He has sent me to this office. He has sent me to this neighborhood. Yes, I am an ambassador. I am a son. I may not have the peace, but we can talk to the prince of peace. Because God, your father, has everything. Tell your neighbor, God, your father, has everything. And the everything, you also are a partaker. That is why we are, under basset, uh, we are ambassadors. We have believed and have been given the power to become sons of God. We are saved but have remained in the shadow despite the honest expectation of God's creation. And this morning, I want us to identify one key. There will be many areas where you will be manifested as sons. But there is one key, and around me for this month, to call it a master key, you will need it wherever, whenever, for whatever. A master key which you will need to manifest as a son. This key was used by many. This key is being used by many. 
This key was used by Jesus himself. And it worked. And it will work for you. And this key is called divine wisdom of God. So in the next few minutes, I want us to talk about that master key called wisdom. To live even parenting, you need this key. Even being a wife or being a husband, you need the key. Being a manager, you need the key. Being a principal of a high school, you need the key called wisdom. I have just said that Jesus used it and it worked. Luke 9, 34 to 35. In NIV, Luke 9, 34 to 35. This is, we are talking about Jesus. While he was speaking, a crowd appeared and covered them. This is the time of trans transfiguration. And they were afraid as they entered the crowd. Verse 35. A voice came from the crowd saying, This is my son whom I have chosen, listen to him. Hold it there. We all need that of affirmation as a son, listen to him. This is where you find your colleagues talk, so worked up. And they are worked up and they will not be invited for that discussion. You know it is useless. You need the wisdom on how you can put back order and give hope and divert or refocus men and women where they can find help. And yesterday we were reminded our help comes from the Lord. As a son of God, because you have believed Jesus, you need wisdom and you need that anointing where God will cause somebody to say, listen to him. We all need that one. It is useful and needed no matter your assignment. Proverbs 4, 7. Proverbs 4, 7. Let's read together. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, are we reading? Look at your neighbor and see whether they're open. Please don't read in the heart. Eh? Don't read in the spirit. Can we read with the mouth? All right, let's read. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, Get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Verse 8. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. When thou doest embrace her, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. By the way, I like the fact that she's being re referred to as a she. I don't know why. Maybe it's because the she's are the ones who, who multiply, who have a womb of multiplication. That one is not in the Bible. But Simumesoma, and it is talking about her, and it is okay. Because where the word of God has given its opinion, yours is not necessary, okay? Wisdom is the principal thing. When you hear of the principal, Sasa uyo die kusema. The principal thing. And with all thy getting, with all your degrees, with all your experience, with all your achievements, get understanding. Exhort her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver to you. I just said earlier on, Jesus had it. Matthew 13, 54. Matthew 13, 54 says, this is about Jesus. He returned to Nazareth, his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this are you reading? Where does he get this? And the power to do miracles. Luke 2, 46 to 47. Now, so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple. This is Jesus. Sitting in the midst of teachers, 
both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and his answers. Godly wisdom made Jesus engage the teachers of the day, the lawyers of the day, asking them questions and giving them answers. Let me tell you, it's not about your academic. Sometimes some of these things, they have their place. But when it comes to spiritual issues, we use spiritual weapons. We need divine wisdom. It becomes relevant wherever you find yourself. Now, is it a wonder that Jesus said, don't worry when they'll take you. The Holy Spirit will give you answers to answer them. Meaning you have not crammed. You have not revised. Because you don't even know the question they will ask you. But the Holy Spirit will give you a word. Tell them, tell your neighbor, you need divine wisdom. Wisdom of God gives us courage and positions us in places of honor. Solomon, I have just said Jesus had it. And I'm now I'm saying Solomon had it. Very quickly, 1 Kings chapter 3. It's a very interesting chapter. 1 Kings chapter 3. Solomon has just been made the king of, of Israel. And now uh, Solomon is addressing God in verse 7. And he's saying, now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a ritual child. I do not know how to go out or come in. Can you imagine King Solomon saying that? It is when the possession is not the issue. This is when you realize it is not what they call me. I need heavenly backing. You need heavenly backing. You need heavenly wisdom. Next verse, verse 8. And your servant is in the midst of your people, whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered. Verse 9. Therefore give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge these great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Solomon had an opportunity to ask for many things. This reminds me of a song, the king of glory is here. Particularly there is a, a place that says like this, Utamuabia nini yukimuona. What are you going to tell, by the name, did you know Jesus is here? You better see him. What are you going to ask? Whenever you experience him, what do you ask? Solomon asked for wisdom and it pleased God. Let's continue the next verse. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, now have asked the life of, nor the life of your enemies, but have asked yourself understanding to discern justice. In another fashion, he talks of wisdom. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you, asking for the principal thing. And when you ask for the right thing, God goes, the God of abundantly above, says, because you have not asked many things, I am going to give you even that which you have not asked. He was given wealth. He was given favor. He was given discerning heart. Actually, in that chapter, it was the test of that gift of wisdom. The story he gives the story of two women, two prostitutes, who came to him, and because one of both had children, and one had slept on her child, and the child died. And in her wisdom, she thought during the night she can exchange the babies and pick the living baby from the other one, the one who was sleeping, and put the dead one in the other one. And so they, they take themselves to the king. And Solomon, putting to test the wisdom, where have you heard of such a case? I, when it comes to God's wisdom, there's no time to revise. It is connection with the heavens. And King Solomon listened from heaven. He looked at the two women arguing. And she said, and there was a competition of words. 
And in his wisdom, he said, can I have a sword? I want to cut this baby into two, and everybody will go home with one piece. The real mother said, don't kill the baby. Let her have it. Because of that one, again, divine wisdom. Solomon said, give her the baby. Let me tell you when you have the wisdom of God, there are situations that will come to you. You will be able to address them accordingly. And even yourself, you ask yourself, where have I gotten that idea? It can only be Godly wisdom. This reminds me of another lady, an elderly lady who is my friend. And, and this went to visit her during the night. And she sleeps on the first floor. And she heard them when they were trying to break the, the, they had already jumped the fence and now they were trying to break the door and they were so determined. And all of a sudden she didn't know what to do. A thought came. She went to the veranda of the, the, her bedroom. And she shouted and said, she called her, her Shaba person, come out, please come and help me to trigger it in a To trigger a gun. She has never owned even now. She doesn't have a gun. An idea just came. And she was calling her Shabba boy. To come and help him trigger it. Release the trigger. Let me tell you the men who are trying to break the door. They were running for their rights. Jumping the fence the other side. That can only be divine. So I was asking her. Where did you get the idea? She told me even me I don't know. I have never imagined myself with a gun. I'm trying to tell you you need this wisdom. Because the Bible says in Psalms 119, I think verse 98, that the, his commandments make us wiser than our enemies. You are always at an advantage. You are always at an advantage. Heavenly wisdom. This wisdom, because it brought Solomon even wealth, he became so famous that even other, other, other leaders, other kings wanted to come and see. And the Bible gives a story in the book of First Kings, the same story, 4.29 and 30. First Kings 4.29 and 30. And God gave Solomon wisdom and exceedingly great understanding and largeness of heart like the sand of the seashore. Then Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the east and all the wisdom of Egypt. Next. For he was wiser than all the men, than Ethan, the Ezra. Uh, uh, let's go to verse 31. To Ethan. He spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. It eliminates... But verse 30 says, it excelled the wisdom of all men. The wisdom of God puts you at an advantage. Verse 34, project for us verse 34. And men of all nations, from all the kings of the earth, who had heard of his wisdom, came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Verse 35. Or because of, of time, uh, let's read Second Chronicles 9, verse 1. Now when the queen of Sheba, now that is another queen from another nation, queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon. She came to Jerusalem to test Solomon with hard questions, having a very great retinue, camels that bore spices, gold in abundance, and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for Solomon that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house of that, the house that he had built, the food of his table and the sitting of his servants, the service of his waiters and their pearl, his cup bearers and their pearl, and his entry by which he went up to the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the king, it was a true report which I had in my own land about your words 
and your wisdom. Let me tell you, I want to challenge you. When is the last time, as you went before the Lord, among the list of the things you asked, you asked him for his wisdom? We ask for many other things and forget the principle. When is the last thing you ask for wisdom and then based on that, you ask for many other things? By the because it is godly to ask for those things. Godly wisdom. We can go on and on, but we may not do it this morning. Daniel asked the same. There was a crisis. The king has had a dream. He can't remember his dream. And then he says he'll kill every wise person. But Daniel took on the challenge. He also didn't know the dream, but he consulted the God of heaven. And when God revealed to him, Daniel came back and praised God. Do you know wisdom promoted Daniel from being as a captive to a very senior position? The wisdom of God is the principal thing. I am here to encourage each one of us. In a season like this one, as you go to God, and even in this season of prayer and fasting, amongst the many things, the rest you have written, and you are telling God, I want you to answer this, how I pray. You will go and add on to your list and tell God, I need your wisdom, even as I undertake this. As I meet my, as I talk with my children, as I talk with my boss, as I talk to my customers, you need godly wisdom. It will just connect you. Wisdom has a way of, is a magnet. And now maybe you're asking, so how do I get it? James chapter 1 verse 5. James 1 verse 5. Let's read together. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So, how do you get it? Ask God. And that's why I'm keeping on asking you, when is the last time you asked God for wisdom? Wisdom will cause you to be manifested as a son. All of a sudden, you are from the bottom. I like that song. How many of us want to go to the next level? You need the wisdom. Wisdom will take you from obscure possession and possession you. Like Daniel. We can't go on and on. It did the same for Joseph. God re wisdom. He interpreted some dream. In the morning he was in the prison. In the evening he was, in the, he was a prime minister. God re wisdom will promote you. Is it a wonder where we read in the book of Proverbs 4, 7 that it will give us promotion. And I am sure here I'm talking to men and women who need God's promotion. So how do you get it? Ask for it. Everything spiritual, every spiritual gift answers to a thirst. No wonder Psalm 63 verse 1 to 4, David says, my soul thirsts for you. If you are thirsting for wisdom, God will meet that thirst. But if you have never asked, the Bible says in Matthew 7, 7, those that ask receive. So ask for it. Seek for it. Seek for it. God the wisdom. Seek for it in the scriptures. We talked, we read about Jesus. They found him reading the scriptures. He would read the scriptures and say, this one has been fulfilled. Daniel, we, talk, we read about Daniel. That when time came for them to leave captivity, he said, it has come. Seek for godly wisdom from the scriptures. Jesus was found reading the scriptures. He that seeketh finds. One of the one thing that you are taught during the revivals was the word of God. You'll find this wisdom in the word of God. And I think I said, that I talked about it. Psalms 119 verse 98. You, through your commandments, make me wiser than my enemies. For they are ever with me. The third way how you can get Godly wisdom. I've said, talked about asking. I've talked about seeking from the scripture. The other one is through impartation. You identify a place where you can be imparted with them. Deuteronomy 34 verse 9. Maybe that one we'll read as I wind up. Deuteronomy 34 verse 9. 
Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. Shall we read together? Now Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him, so the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. You can obtain godly wisdom by seeking impartation. In the, Paul talks to Timothy and says that he has had that godly wisdom because of the Holy Scriptures. Impartation. Second Timothy 3.15. And how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Godly wisdom. And from where we read in the book of Proverbs 4. Benefits of God's wisdom. Promotion to places of authority. Solomon received it. Joseph received it. Daniel received it. I want you to add your name there and say, I will get that promotion because I will look for it. I will ask for it. And where I identify it, I will go and I will be laid hands on and I will get the spirit of wisdom. Another benefit, respect by all. Solomon was respected by both the people he was ruling and the other kings surrounding him. Until the queen of Sheba wanted to come and see with her own eyes. Respect. When everyone had his judgment, that is Solomon, they were filled with all. Others outside his kingdom came like the queen of Sheba. Wealth. You wonder why the queen of Sheba had come with all this wealth. And then he gives it to Solomon, who was not his relative. Godly wisdom has a way of attracting all these things. And as the Lord manifests us and reveals us to the world as his sons, we will need all this. People respect their possessions. So when you are promoted, it's an added advantage. Respect, we need it. Even if you are, it is just with your children. I've encountered parents whose cry is, my children don't respect me. Wealth, we all need it. We know where money answereth all things. All this, not everything. Wisdom gives us victory over our enemies. It gives us the ability to do mighty works and miracles that cannot be supported by who we are. When Jesus started doing many miracles, the people were asking one another. They were trying to support what is happening. I talk about the miracles. And they were saying, Jesus, son of a carpenter. His brothers and sisters, we leave them. We even know where they are. Mama who? Mama Miriam, maybe. It could not be supported. But here is Jesus, so confident, facing the, the leaders of the day because of godly wisdom. It positions you in a place people will not be able to explain it and we need it. And that way you'll be manifested as a son. Every believer has the potential and you can be a carrier of wisdom. And it is your turn to be manifested. Tell your neighbor it is my turn. I know we all need promotion. You need respect. You need wealth. You need authority. You want miracles and wonders. You want it. Where they are, you can't argue with the results. If you're telling people, one of the saddest verses that makes my heart sad when I read is when I come in contact with the scripture that asks, and people they were asking, where is their God? Ah, we tell people how our God is great. And we are lamenting like every one of them, that shall not be our portion. So be it, God has to give us and push us. And I know wisdom is a principal thing. And that's why I said, no matter your assignment, wherever you find yourself, it will help you. And I want us to wind up by reading the same verse, Proverbs 4, 3, but you read in the message version and you help me and we'll be done. Proverbs 4. 3 to 9 in the message version, if you project it for us. Let's read together. 
When I was a boy at my father's knee, the pride and joy of my mother, he would sit me down and drill me, take this to heart, do what I tell you, live. Sell everything and buy wisdom. For rage, for understanding. Don't forget one word. Don't defeat an inch. Never walk away from wisdom. She guards your life. Love her. She keeps her eye on you. Above all, and before all, do this. Get wisdom. Like this at the top of your list. Get understanding. Throw your arms around her. Believe me, you won't regret it. Never let her go. She will make your life glorious. She will garland your life with grace. She will festoon your days with beauty. And I know that is the desire of each one of us. Is that your desire? You want it? You want it? I want to welcome the worship team. And we will sing that part of that song I talked about. The king of glory is here. And particularly, utamuabia nini ukimuona? Kwa sababu wako wapa, ukimuona utamuabia nini? Si utamuabia tu unataka wisdom. Principle. If I get wisdom, I'll be promoted. I'll be respected. I'll be wealthy. So you have it. They used to say that nakumati. You need it, we've got it. Wisdom is saying this morning to you. You need it, you've got it. The wisdom from God. How I pray. If you have heard nothing I have said, you will go and add on to your list of requests every day. Whatever other request, you will ask for God's wisdom. Wisdom will manifest you as a son. Because sons are powerful. At the gate, they protect and the father is confident inside because sons are at the gate. We'll be able to guard the gates of the kingdom. Shall we stand. I, 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 I. The king of glory is he. I, 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 I.
I know he's here because the Bible says where two or three gather in his name, his presence. And I'm asking you this question. What are you telling him? The Lord appeared to Solomon. And he was asked, he was invited and asked, what would you want from me? And I'm posing the question to you. Because the king of glory is here, what are you asking? If you are listening to me, and you want to join in this prayer that we need wisdom in the days we are in. And you would want that gift of divine wisdom. If you raise up your hand, we are going to make this prayer. Because I said, no matter who you are, where you are, your agenda, your position, it will be good for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our hands to you, O God. Because you are here. You are here, thou king of glory. That's why we are worshipping you. And we are telling you this morning... We want not to disappoint you. We want to be manifested as sons. And we need wisdom to carry ourselves with wisdom and dignity. And our hands are lifted up to you, O oh God. Because you have told us wisdom is principle. And with wisdom, we will find many other things. Behold the hearts of your children this morning. As we lift up to them to you, O oh God. The Lord, in your own way, you will cause us to hear what you are saying. Give us the grace to ask. Give us the humility to ask. Give us the humility to seek for it from the scriptures. And give us the humility to ask of it from those who have it. We honor you and we bless you this morning in Jesus' name.